Hi there, I am Sandy Allnock, and today I have something a little bit different for you. I don't usually do things with just Distress Ink, but I have a technique for some Distress Ink flowers that I wanted to share using these Alexandra Rinky dies. They're brand new, at least brand new to me. I hadn't seen them till Ellen Hudson decided to carry them. And I got these five sets because I wanted to see how they work, how well they, they die cut, and use them for this particular idea I had for using Distress Inks with them, but I also wanted to see how they are size-wise in comparison to the packaging or the picture. Some of them have larger packaging and smaller dies, and some have smaller dies and larger packaging. They don't always match copacetically, like this one. The little picture on it is the same size as the die, so that's a little confusing potentially, but at the end you're going to see, and you can go over to my blog as well, to see actually a picture of each of the die cuts next to a card so you can see how these are sized in particular. There are plenty more flowers than these over on Ellen's site so you could pick through tons and tons of different flowers. Apparently Alexandra Rinky likes flowers. So I'm going to show you how to do two of these cards and then I'll just show you the finished cards of the other three at the end as well. So I'm going to get my little distress inks out and you can do these in all different kinds of fun colors. I've got my Distress Ink Applicator Tool, the little round one, and I'm just gonna move this piece of acetate with the dies cut out of it over and around to put my flowers wherever I want them. Now you could do each flower and its stem at the same time, but I wanted to get my flower head arrangements done first and figure out which ones I wanted in what colors, how I wanted to lay those out, you could do a small vignette of flowers. You could do a whole garden full of them. You could do a background pattern like this. That would be gorgeous to do that kind of a thing. So now I'm going to switch to a little bit of scattered straw. So everything's got to have some yellow in it, doesn't it? So put some scattered straw flowers. When you do your die cutting out of a piece of acetate, and this can be any kind of acetate, the heavier the better if you want it to last longer. If you want to keep it and make more of these flowers later on. Just don't die cut them too close to the edge because you don't want your blending tool to accidentally start putting color out where you don't want it beyond the, the plastic. And when you change colors, just take a baby wipe and clean it off and then dry it off with a paper towel gently. And then you can reuse this just indefinitely as long as this acetate lasts. So now I'm going to get a little bit of peeled paint and then I'm going to line up each one of the flowers with the the flower head at the top and then go over the stem itself and that's going to be a real easy process to just push that color right through that little stem bada boom bada bing and you'll have a, a beautiful stem down there at the bottom and as you go through you can change stems you can use a stem from one flower on another flower as you move them around lots of different ways to do that there is one die that is just stems. And you can see it's got, it's the one I'm not using. It's the only one that doesn't have ink on it. Um, it has a place where the, the stem bursts out and then there's a big empty spot in the bottom. Because with dies, in order to get those inner shapes, you need to have the inner shapes sit there and you can't do that with this technique. So I'm not gonna use that particular portion or else I'm gonna have a big blob of ink in one color but I can also create extra stems by just using the stems from these others. And that led to another problem that I discovered that I did, but you know, I figured out a solution to that as well. Because here I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to add the last of my planned stems from the planned flowers, and then start to add some others in between. Because this was too sparse to me, I wanted to have more. So I just put a stem where I wanted it and then went ahead and used it instead of using that little grass piece and then I have I have another piece of grass along the way that I can add to it and I can stop my inking wherever I want to stop my inking I don't have to go all the way into that flower head and then there's places like that where I accidentally put a flower head there whoops so that's gonna be real easy to go back in later though and add another flower right in that spot so if you mess that up like I did it's perfectly okay to just fix it up by adding a flower. But I got my, my arrangement done there at the bottom and then here I am fixing 
the flower. I had another one at the top there that sort of had goofed up. But I thought I liked the idea of having those little softer ones in the background, so I added a few more because it was kind of fun to have some, some really soft, light ones. And you could do a bunch with a whole bunch of different colors and do a whole garden full of them. And if you got several of these Alexandra Rinky dyes, do a garden with a whole bunch of different kinds of flowers in them. So there's what the dye pieces look like. And there's pictures of all this on the blog so you can see that. And what I did was create a Believe sentiment on it and put a Lawn Fawn dye for that little piece popped up. And I used these as my Easter cards. I did these just before Easter. I didn't have time to post the video before then, but I thought I'd make Easter cards out of them. So they all have my Believe sentiment from an Ellen Hudson set that was a Christmas set. And I pulled it out for Easter because I didn't have any dyes that said Happy Easter. But Believe works for me because then I put on the inside, Jesus is alive. So there you go. Uh, this one is another beautiful dye. It's a tulip dye. And it has some intricate parts on the inside of that tulip head. And so I'm trying to add some, some colors in here. I've got some, I think this was the picked raspberry with a little bit of scattered straw. I'm trying to make sort of a salmon color overall and let the colors kind of blend together. And add my stem to it. And then I wanted to add the detail from the die itself. So I took the die that I cut out of some paper so that you could see it. You could also do this with the clear plastic, the acetate, but it was a little easier for you to see what I'm doing. And then hold it in place and tap more ink onto the inside. And I'm gonna add a little bit more color to it as well. Add a little bit, if I can hold it in place there, add a little bit of purple at the bottom so that I get more of that gradation of color and then lift it up and see how beautiful it is. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous detail. Well, you'll see it in a minute. I've covered it up. And then I'm going to do another one of the flowers and I'm just going to do it in different colors down here below it. And I'm doing it in lighter colors so I can make it look like it's tucked behind. And, you know, using some of that scattered straw again add some more of the picked raspberry at the bottom. Light, you know, nice light colors on this one. The other one was darker, richer colors. Just add a little bit more under there. Add that flower back in. Now, notice you can also do them left, right, upside down. So you can flip the dies, you can flip the templates, and do them different directions too, and get a different look from your, your same dies. Add my stem here and lift that up and look how pretty those tulips are aren't they gorgeous you can see one is flipped left right from the other so they're slightly different there's one other small die in this one which is a, a little one and i'm going to make just a little yellow bud out of that one with a little tiny bit of pink on it because that's going to help it to have a little bit of definition and then make my stems cross which i thought was a little more elegant than just having a straight stem so here is the dies that I just used on that one and the finished card. I added the believe on that one, popped up the panel and I used some of the pinkish and purplish colors on the left and yellowish colors on the right to color my card base and add a little bit more to that. This one was an interesting die. It's called tendril. And I used that one to create just a little vine garden along the side. How gorgeous is that? and use the green colors, the two green shades, to do a gradated little panel on the, the card base. And I just thought that was really pretty. You can also use this, the cutout piece, as a mask and create some white lines and, and use them in that kind of a way. Now this one is called Poppies and it is really beautiful. I made this bouquet of the poppies. I used the colors from it to make the panel on the left-hand side on the card base, but to make the vase, what I figured out to do, because I wanted a vase and there's no vase die here, I cut a piece of the acetate and I just made a curve and make any old wonky curve and then you can hold it up to where you want your vase to be and then do your inking from there. Use something like washi tape across the top, but there I've created the two sides of the vase by just flipping that piece of acetate and then save that and use it with other cards. Then we have these little snowdrops. 
And there's going to be stills, by the way, of each one of these, so you'll be able to see them uh, if you want to pin them and know what size everything is. And again, on this one, I used the Lawn Fawn Stitched Hillsides die to create a little, little ground for it and just made some really pretty light little snowdrop flowers. And there's all of the cards together. Aren't they a beautiful set that I sent out for Easter this year? You could put all kinds of sentiments with them. They'd be great for Mother's Day, all kinds of beautiful stuff that you can make with these dies. Check them all out. There's tons of Alexander Rinky. I'll put a link to the whole category as well because you're going to want to see it all. It's gorgeous stuff. All right, I'll see you guys later. Take care.